What do you want to do? It's your world, Christopher Cheney. All right, we're rolling. Everything seems to we're look rolling. good here. Yeah. It's a beautiful uh, 97 fucking degrees in, in New York City today. I would not say it's beautiful at all. I would say it's disgusting outside. It is fucking gross, bro. It is disgusting. I just look at a window and I start sweating. Bro, it is disgusting out there. It is one, it's probably the hottest day of the year so far. Yeah. Happens on Saturday for everyone listening across the world or whatever. Uh, just know that I know I'm sure it gets hot wherever you're at because it's the summer, but... It is fucking hot here. The humidity is intense. Dude, I'm not even going to... Normally, I would turn the AC off, but I'm not even going to turn the AC off while we record no, this. No, don't return. It. Nope. <laughs> and, and then tomorrow's going to be 99. 99? That's what it says. Damn. Are we breaking th- uh, three-digit threshold here? No, nah, it doesn't nah, look I like mean, it. I mean, not not yet, but I mean, dude, it's going to be a day. It's, it, New York New York got so bad that yesterday that they uh, they shut down the number trains. The yeah, one, two, yeah. three, four. <laughs> no and, one could get up or downtown. Yeah, so you had to take the letter trains, the A, B, C, D, yeah. E, you know, and um, I think they were getting people prepped for today. I think that today's a, I think they were just basically doing that so people could decide to stay their ass home. They were like, probably. Good luck. If you, if you want to go out, then there's a chance you're going to get stuck. And it's like a drill. It's. I don't even know how to. There's no way to like walk around New York City when it's like this. No, it's, it's not. I mean, you could walk uh, one city block, bro, and be like, "Nah, I'm good," and just turn right back around. It's that bad out here. It's it's awful. And like normally, I'm normally I'm like kind of mad at like the homeless dudes when they're like basically running around naked. But today I'm like, guys, you gotta no. I find somewhere cool, find some shade, get naked, bro. Hide. I, we I, don't need you cooking. Yeah, you don't want to be out there. I mean. They they said uh, I saw someone had posted uh, that you know you can go to a, a public library. Oh yeah, you can. And um and just cool and just be like just be free because I mean I feel like I feel like dog and, and this type of you know there's dudes out there I saw dudes out in fucking Timberland boots, bro. Th- th- those guys are absurd. <laughs> that's that's insanity. It's, insanity. it's befuddling it's, actually. It, yeah, it's insane, bro. <laughs> so um you know just like for those of you like you said I mean by the time these these episodes. Uh, it's a two-parter, uh, but by the time these episodes air, you know, obviously, you know, you're not going to be in the heat. It's hopefully it cools down in the 80s or, or, you know, wherever you're at. You're not dealing with triple digits feeling, but, you know. Just, yeah. Just be safe, man. All I right. mean, just to get the, uh, the ball officially rolling here, this is Sub Podcast, episode number 72, part one and two. It's part one and two, so I guess we could do 70. Yeah, we could do 71. And then 72. Two. 70, yeah, just, a, I don't know. Well, we'll see how we'll it goes. Okay. I mean, we haven't done a two-parter in a while. Yeah, in a while, in a couple, in like <clears> a, a few months. We're talking almost a year. Yeah, so, well, no, we'll do a two-parter. That's fine, we'll do a two-parter, you know. Yeah, 72 part one, and yeah. then two will just be whenever I f- decide yeah. to cut it. Chris <laughs> and I, you know, we both we both are doing things. We're going to be, uh, you know, um, we, we won't be available so uh you know we're trying to knock out some things for you so you guys can uh you guys can enjoy us for the summer <laughs> uh you know i guess chris i mean we can i guess we can start there's a couple things i want to start with uh yeah, one want, today buddy. i mean dude it, it is literally the fucking uh summer in the year of travis scott yeah did, so did you try to get them this morning uh of course and uh, of course, I took that L like I was destined yeah. to take. You know, talking about of course the uh, Travis got low ones. Yes, and uh, you know, congrats to anyone who actually got a pair. Um, I saw on Reddit there were a couple W uh, stories. Yeah, there's a few W. I feel like a lot of people uh, got through uh, on the uh, on the lows, which is dope. Uh, it's always good to get through. I I, I kind of just wanted them to like sell or trade some shit. Yeah. I didn't want them just like I don't know. I didn't want them for myself. I'm not a. I like I like. Low uh, SBs. I don't like low Jordans. I feel like because of the cushioning. Yeah. I feel like it's not. Um, I don't like lows in general. I don't wear many lows. Really? Yeah. I'm a mid to high guy. Yeah. Well, I'm, I can see what you're saying. I mean, especially like Jordans or like uh, Dunks. You like the highs. Big time, baby. So did you try? No, I didn't try. Did you wake up late? No, I was up, but yeah. I had no interest. Yeah, no interest. Yeah, I just like I said, bro, I, it was one of those. Um, it was one of those. I just wanted something to make some money off of this morning. That was you know what? We it. could segue into the. I didn't even see this until after. Mm-hmm. But did you see that Adidas was doing the Arizona iced tea? They selling things for a dollar shit. Yeah, I mean, well, we can. Well, yeah, we could do that. I was because thinking about huge W's. People were buying those sneakers for a dollar, and they're like on StockX for like two hundred. Yeah, but the uh, New York City police shut it down. They though. shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. 
I didn't even know about that though. I we should have went to that. I was like, damn it, that looks fucking sick. Uh, no, my my days of being with those savages and <laughs> are completely uh, over. Uh, I ref- I refuse to do that shit, man. I would have just went to, to her, they were a dollar. Yeah, but I mean, come on, man. You know, you you got to realize, man. When when you start seeing shit like that, sneakers for a dollar, or like just something that people really want to make a lot of money off of. Yeah, bro, you it's you're gonna it's especially in New York City. Like you cannot leave cheese for rats. That's if true. That makes sense. You yeah. cannot leave food for rats because rats will don't fucking, feed the pigeons. Yeah, don't feed don't feed fucking people who are gonna be out there fighting and you know dude i like i said i've been a part of in my younger days so many camp outs that i'm just like lawrence what the fuck were you doing man you know and and, and something like this i wouldn't even the last time I, I was i actually was out for uh and just hanging out like trying to get some kicks it was uh bape nmds and this was i think when november 2016 that was the last time like i was really like, tried out like and then it got shut down because <laughs> thousands of people were just lined up in front of Bape and then the Adidas store, which is right around the corner from Bape. Yeah, and in Soho, New York, and I just got to the point, bro. I was like, no, this is not what I'm ever gonna do. And I think, I think after that, a lot of releases became more of, um, more of a uh, computer thing. A computer. I yeah. mean, at that point, it was like because you know Bape. They didn't have the, you know, they didn't do a raffle. They didn't do, it was like first come, first serve, Black Friday. And it was like, you know, that's not something you can do. Yeah. No, I agree. So, yeah. So, it got shut down. Uh, I, You know, I looked at, you know, a lot of, I mean, like. The I shoes said, are ugly. They're not sh- good shoes. But for a dollar, I was like, damn. And I just like that story. Because, I mean, for those who don't know, if you don't drink Arizona iced tea and you're under a rock somewhere, you uncultured swine. Um, yeah, the sugar water is a dollar here in New York City. You can get like a big fucking can of it. And that's that's the cool thing about it. Arizona's always been a dollar, so I just like how they did the dollar thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it sucks that they got shut down like that. But I would have liked to just roll it up and see what it was about. Like I said, man, <laughs> if you've been to no disrespect, if you've been to one, yeah, I haven't been, been to, to one here all. in New York City. You never, I've, you've never been to a camp like a. I did Boston shit, but I never did one here. Okay, because when I moved here, like 2014, 15, 14, no, 13, 14. Whenever I moved here, I was kind of over the buying and shit, over like the the you know, the hype frenzy shit. Like yeah, like like you're saying, I was kind of done going out for them. I did all that, and uh, yeah, so I never did one here. I just did shit in Boston. But yeah, man, that seems cool as shit. It, it's a complete man. Listen, it's a completely different animal. Um, it's it's something that, like I said, yeah, you you know you you. It's not something you really want to experience, man. I, you know. All right, it's it's literally you got the resellers who mm-hmm. are in the know. Yep. And then you got a bunch of kids who want to try to make some money. Yep. Then you got some street dudes who want to make some money. Yep. And you, you know, then you got the sneaker purist who's like, oh man, I want this for mm-hmm. myself. Yep. And you put all those in, in an element, and it can be really combustible, bro. I've, I've <laughs> combustible is a funny way of putting that. The uh, <laughs> I got the uh, the Jordan three uh, JTHs. Yeah, um, it was his last last March um, from uh, when he was when Justin Timberlake was doing his concert. Uh, Champs on Forty Second Street. Uh, they had them. Yeah, and, um, and security was just like dudes were like it was literally like a thousand people in the street over by Times Square. If you know anything, if you know Times Square how it works, uh, for those listening, there's a big Foot Locker on uh, on Broadway and I believe Forty First. And then there's a champs yeah, on, on the bro- other side. On the other yeah. side, they just literally opened the champs, and um, and they they had these Justin Timberlake uh, Jordans, and it was like a thousand people just out there for probably like maybe a few hundred pairs, and in security, like it wasn't like one of those overnight things, but it was one of those. It, if you were in the know, you knew, and then when you found out, you rushed over there. Yeah. And I worked in the area, and I was actually on a break. I was just like walking. I had to go. I was on a break from my job, and I just happened to be walking, and I just kind of stood there for like a minute or so, and uh, security kind of just picked me up. They were like, "Hey, you you want to go inside?" And I was like, "Oh shit!" You know what I mean? I was like, "Of course." <laughs> and um, you know, but to sit there and and like I said, I've been a part of. There was a. Uh, I'm trying to think what was there was uh, I think Moles Sneaker Shop in Astoria Queens. They did a. Uh, I think it's called Moles. Uh, we can check that out. Welcome to Moe's. We can let me take a look. Uh, Moe's sneaker shop. 
Yeah, look it up. <clears throat> uh, sneaker, most sneakers in a story. I think they closed, or uh, they was. Okay, yeah, most sneakers. They was doing a. Uh, they were doing a. Um, a grand opening, and they said that they had all these, all this heat from Yeezy twos to, you know, and and it was, uh, and and when I say. Uh, thousands of people went to that shop. Yeah, and got it shut down. <laughs> New York, New York City to me is home of like they every, we get everything. Yeah, but the people around, um, the people around just ruin it. Yeah, they're animals. And um, <laughs> it was Moles and Atlas Park. This is probably around 2013, 14ish. If Yeezy's yeah, around two thousand, maybe two thousand twelve, and um. Bro, I just remember getting the moles at like four in the morning, in, a, in Atlas Park in Queens. Yeah. And at this point, there was dudes just in cars, cars, like thousands of people. And then moles, it was a, it felt like a publicity stunt, just like you know, certain, like these Arizona shits. Yeah. Where they know they don't have a the security, b the fucking the product, to the the people to withstand something this crazy, but. They get so many people to come out, and then hey, shut it down. You know, and I and I think that's what happens a lot of places. I mean, I get Chris. I, I have hundreds of these stories, man. And I, think <laughs> I I do want to talk a little couple more because, like I said, we're you know we are doing a two parter. But I mean, I can remember. Um, I remember two thousand. I think eight. I remember I went to Twenty One Mercer uh, at like six in the morning for a pair of uh, crank. Air Force Ones. Crank is the designer. The, yeah, the, KR. KR. Graf- yeah, the graffiti artist. The graffiti his name artist. is KR, but he's made the ink company, paint company. He's yeah, crank, KR. Yeah. Crank. Yeah, so those pairs. He's known for the drip. Yep, <clears throat> he's the drip Air Force Ones. And I remember drip. I got there, and dude, I mean, it was a zoo. Yeah, I'm and, sure. Dude, 21 was real bad back in the day. 21 Mercer, it, it was home of the back door. Yeah. And home of the, if you knew someone... You there's a chance you can get it. So, well, because right now it's a, it's technically a Nike lab, right? It's Nike not, lab. Yeah, yeah but no, before it was just a regular Nike Mercer, store for 21, some of it our was still affiliated with. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I mean, it was 21 Mercer, and it, it, it wasn't Nike lab. But um, I remember I got there, and I mean, dudes were already there, and um, I remember security was uh was picking dudes out again, and and uh, you know, got to the point where security there was only a few pairs left. And um, security was like, uh, he looked at me and he was like, go, you. And I went in. I was one of the last people. And I got there and I was like, can I get a 12? And they said, all we have is like a, a 14 mm-hmm. left. And, um, and back then I wasn't like on some, fuck it, I'll just take any size. And I was like, ah, I felt defeated. Damn. But, um, you know, I think... Um, I've been, like I said, I've been a part of, I mean, Jordan won fragments. I mean, I, I've talked about that on this podcast, you know, dudes stabbing each other for a pair, for, for a ticket. Um, you know, I, I remember, uh, yeah, I've, I've been a part of so, I've seen so many, so many bad, like crazy things for, you know, so when you talk about shit like this, like I see and dollar sneakers, I already know. <laughs> yeah, I never did the New York thing. I, I kind of want to see it just to. I wish I was a part of at least one of them. Like when I interned here in like in 2010, there was no, I don't think there was even anything really going on for me to like grab that was that hype, at least that I knew about. Mm-hmm. But also, I was outside of the circle. I didn't I know. You. I'm, you know, I guess I'm arguably outside the circle now too. I just know more of the people at the brands than like the plugs. Than the plugs. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, all that shit seems so wild. I guess that's why I wanted to go see it. I never was like a part of those moments. It's fun. It's obviously it's changed. You know, I can remember, you know, in, in 2003, 2004, when, you know, I, I me and my boys on uh, Nike Town, they would do a midnight drop. Yeah, Nike Town. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They would, do, they would do midnight drops. Yeah. So instead of, you know, 8 a.m., it would be, you would be out there at, you know, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Starting eight hours, yeah, and um, the uh, oh, you know what? Oh, hold up, I- I'll tell you. This was uh, 2004. <laughs> I, remember uh-huh. I-, I remember I got two pairs. I bought two pairs of Olympic sevens, and uh, ended up selling. I think one, and ke- and then pocketing the rest, like yeah. a little bit of money for and, sure. Um, and and that was that was crazy because I mean at midnight, bro, you would like I right, I'm going. Like, you would be in Manhattan. You would get your ass right back on the train and go back to Brooklyn. So you you would have to walk through 
hundreds of dudes. You'd be on the train at midnight, going back to your hood with a pair of fuck with two pairs of sneakers. It was like it was those were the times. Another crazy a couple crazy releases and I once again I, I don't know what the Adidas joint was like, but I do remember uh the first pair of shattered backboards. Yeah. In two thousand fifteen, which was I was out there at Nike Town mm-hmm. and um because they uh, there was a rumor that they were giving out tickets. Uh you know, it was a Friday night. And I remember I had a show, and I had this uh. moral dilemma. I was like, "Damn, Morris, do you wait <laughs> here? To, do, you, do you wait here to get a ticket, or do you fuck say fuck the ticket and go to your show?" I can imagine the text. You like, "Yo, I can't make it. There's orange sneakers about to come out." <laughs> <laughs> I I remember I was doing the show. And what show was it? Do you remember the show? Because that also matters. It was a uh, bitches brew. Oh, so it was a good show. It was a good show. Bitches Brew was one of the one of the better uh, shows in New York City, and I remember texting. That matters a lot, actually. Yeah, it, it definitely matters a lot. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, what? Yeah, no, because like you're willing to just to, because I mean, for those listening, like when there's so many comedians and shows in New York City that a lot of the shows end up being bad, and it's like really no one's fault. It's just an over uh, saturated market that we're trying to create good shows in. So. Lawrence debating just bailing on a good show, which is uh, Halyard's Friday at eight. So you, if you listen now, that still goes on. You can go see; it's a great show. Um, like, goddamn, dude, <laughs> that's yeah. that's crazy. I I just remember to just be like, I don't know. <laughs> I remember uh, it. It was I remember mapping it out and saying, if I go, how long will it take me to get from Midtown Manhattan to? Uh, what, yards, yeah. what part of Brooklyn is that? That's uh, I don't know. It's like past it's like past Atlanta, the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It's like Park Slopeish, but past that, like yeah, you, I would call it Park Slope. I guess I, I guess don't you know. can it's call it area, Park yeah. Slope area. And I remember they said it would take around forty minutes to get there. And I said, well, all right, if the show starts at eight fifteen or eight thirty, you get your ticket by this, you can be there by. And I just remember these animals do got the line shut down. Security was like, we're not giving out tickets. We're not giving out tickets, and I remember just at around eight fifteen, I texted the girl. I said I'll be there by like nine ten, because I, you know, at that point I was like, all right, I'll give up. Yeah. And uh, they ended up. It was a Friday night, and then they ended up. Uh, no one knew what they were gonna do with this with these sneakers because. Yeah. And I remember Nike ended up doing a uh, uh, a raffle, paper raffle, on a Sunday. <laughs> you have to signify it's paper raffle. It was a paper raffle. <laughs> That's just funny though. And the paper raffle. I remember, dude. I remember it was, pat, it was like the line was deep, bro. And um, and then the next day they called us. I ended up winning a pair, and um, but I just remember like saying to myself, dude, you're out trying. This was this, the shattered backboards is so dope because it was the it was the weekend of the very first Yeezy 350 release, the Turtle Doves. Oh, so if you were in a no. You either were at Barney's, New York, which was on 60th or whatever in Madison or 59th in Mad or and then which and then or you could be at Nike Town, which at the time was on 57th and 5th, which is literally two blocks yeah. over, uh, across and then one block over. So dudes was just like trying to get both running, scrambling. Running around back and forth. And uh, I remember uh, I got so drunk the night before. I got drunk and high the night before. And I remember... <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you're gonna yeah, go dude. to Barney's and you're gonna get a ticket for the Yeezys, and you're gonna get and I and I ended up missing out on the Turtle Doves because I was like, I was just like, fuck it, and I thought I didn't think they were gonna be that big, right? You know how big they turned out to be. Yeah, and then for them to immediately just like today, everyone's like, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> so funny. It it definitely had you know that bro that, that had a th- uh, what a three or four year stretch where everyone was like god damn he's fucking crazy and now it's just like i mean turtle doves are still nothing dude yeah i mean turtle doves specifically because they're the, one of the first ones like Tur- the, that first run shit for sure still has that hype I, attached to it I, I think turtle doves and pirate black still but yeah man i as i'm saying chris it's you know i tell people all the time like like camping out like for shoes is so nah so when you see shit like this get shut down you're like yeah I didn't, come on man you know, and just to piggyback off the conversation of some, something falling flat and hype or whatever, um, we could follow up on the Betsy Ross conversation because uh, ne- I guess those are being sold for like ten grand, the ones that people got their hands on. Yeah. And I didn't know this, but apparently the Arizona governor was pissed at them because they dropped it, right? And the, I guess he was trying to pull a grant, he or she, I forget the 
uh, gender. But they were trying to pull a grant because they were trying to open a new facility mm-hmm. in Arizona to work on Nike Air Technology. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I didn't. I thought they were. I thought the dude was just racist and was like, "Wait, I want the Betsy Ross flag on that shit." But no, I guess they're opening a whole new facility down there. Oh, really? Well, yeah. I mean, Arizona has its own shared history with African Americans, and uh, uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> you know, Martin Luther King, and you know, being the last state to you know to pretty much accept you know yeah. Martin Luther King God uh, a holiday, and um, you know, we we talked about. The sneaker before it's gonna go down as something that would have been outlet bound if um if it didn't have yeah. the controversy behind it. Ten grand though, I didn't think it was gonna go that high, bro. It's crazy. I mean, you see people pay for a limited shit. Yeah, ten grand. But that's dope that they still opened that facility. And it was I was confused for a while because apparently it's in Goodyear, Arizona. And I thought for I like before I started really looking into it, I was mm-hmm. like I thought it was Goodyear, like the tire. Mm-hmm. Company, I was like, "What? Right. Goodyear and Nike are working together? This is ridiculous." But no, but that's that's cool though. So I just like that they still had got that facility open, and now there's going to be some more jobs for people down good, there. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's yeah, so what we need, man. We need more people to have more jobs in this world, man. Because you know, um, yeah, that's what we need, bro. Hell yeah, dude. I mean, there's a lot of people, um, of partnering up too, dude. Like, so I don't know if you saw the new partnering up. You talking about Anthony Davis and LeBron James, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, or who are you talking about partnering? Up? I was talking about Lil Wayne and American Eagle, or Jaden Smith and New Balance, or I mean, I just saw that Cardi B Reebok commercial. So there's all all those things right there. We living in in 2019. It's the it's the year of uh, pairs, bro. Yeah, I mean. I don't know which part you want to go down first, the NBA or the the sneaker affiliate line, but I mean, a lot. The Little Wayne American Eagle one blew my mind. Why? Because I was like, well, who the? F- why the fuck would you do that, Wayne? That's a, I never associated American Eagle and Little Wayne never once. You know what? You know what Little Wayne associated American Eagle with? What? Money, cold well, hard well, cash. Yeah, He's I get getting paid <laughs> out his fucking ass to do this. That's probably why. It's such a obvious ploy to get Gen Z into American Eagle market because, like, back. All right, so. Uh, 15 years ago for us, probably, uh-huh. is when that shit was really popping, right? American Eagle, yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember. Abercrombie, uh, Hollister, all that shit. I put them in, like, in the same category of, like... I don't... Well, two, that's 15 years ago is 2004. I don't think... I mean, I wasn't... I, maybe because I'm a little bit older than you by a few years. Like, maybe. Four, like, three, four, five years. But um, I don't ever remember... I mean, bro, I was never in the... Abercrombie, Hollister. That used to be the shit in high school. Real, yeah. Yeah, all the jock kids would be rocking that shit. Really? Yeah. I mean, you also went to a predominantly white school, correct? Suburban white neighborhood, yeah, yeah. But that's also facts. Yeah, because I mean, when I mean when when we when I was in high school, I think we used to wear um, Sean John, Rockaware. That was the shit that, you know, people yeah. fly. And then if you were really, like, you know, on some, like, getting money, like, really, like, hustling, or you had, like, an older sister who took care of you, you was getting Kooji or, like, um, or Evizu. Well, Evizu mm. was, like, 03, 04. But, um, or the main thing was throwback jerseys. Yeah. I mean, I was wearing South Pole and Echo. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and I, I remember this one time I, I did go, I think I might have mentioned this on the podcast one time before, but I was with a girl I liked, and then uh, we went to... Africa or America. We went to one of those stores. I even forget which one. Okay. But she she convinced me to buy a polo shirt for like fifty bucks, and I even at the XL size that I got it, it was still too. It was like too tight for really? me. Yeah, and I grew a resentment for those all those brands. I was like, these fucking stupid European size and brands, fucking. <laughs> Bro, I, I remember we could, <laughs> we couldn't even afford. I mean, throwback jerseys when we were in high school. I mean, at three four hundred dollars, we were just like, this is crazy. But we used to see like a lot of drug dealers in our neighborhood wear them, like you know. Yeah. Those were, you know, if you knew if you were a drug dealer, you were wearing a throwback jersey with it. If you had a little bit of money, you were spending three hundred on a Mitchell and Ness. And I remember me and my boy, we just started wearing polo shirts, Lacoste shirts. This is two thousand two, and we used to match them with Gap jeans because I worked at the Gap, so we would get you know fifty percent off some jeans <laughs> and a pair of Jordan ones. And that was our that was our uh, that was our, the look that was our look in two thousand two two thousand three, and then we started getting money, you know. And I used to work at the NBA store. We we were getting jerseys for you know forty percent off. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Throwback jerseys. I mean, what do you think this little Wayne thing is going to look like though? Like, I can't imagine because. I mean, do you think he's going to get his own capsule, or is just going to be a model? Like, I don't I, really understand. He probably get his own capsule. I mean, he's big enough to get his own like his own capsule, bro. Yeah. It's, it's I mean. I feel like everyone's just trying to go left field with a lot of the stuff too, because Jaden Smith in New Balance seems a little weird to me too. 
Jane Smith looks like a very fashionable kid. He's very fashion forward, which I, you know, I, I understand that New Balance and like the dad shoe thing is kind of getting uh, its own weird hype around mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. and that kind of I guess is in Jaden Smith's warehouse. But like, about all the people, you probably could have had some fun with. You know, New Balance just seems a weird partnership for me. I mean, that. why? Why? I mean, New Balance. You got to realize, man, it's not. It's not about what a lot of people, right? Yeah, everyone can't just say, "All right, I'm gonna, I want to be a Nike boy, or I want to be a, uh, uh, you know, I want to rock Louis or Gucci, like you know, or Polo." You know the, the no, I get what you're saying. You know, it's kind of like sometimes you will take a deal with a company that may it may not always make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but even all right. So all right, so remove New Balance, but think of all the New Balance esque brands that are out there i feel like he could have found like a weirder partnership that would have made more sense in the long run got you you know what i mean like think of him in like uh now i was gonna say mizuno but um just just like a weird brand like that where like i mean even saucony would make more sense to me because no one's touching saucony yeah but i mean you i would still say new balance i would touch new balance before i touch saucony saucony is what a boston brand too right I mean, most of these brands. Like a a new, lot of these new, guys are in new Boston. New Balance is in Boston as well, correct? Yeah, Puma's in Boston too. Uh, Converse is in Boston. Yeah. Uh, uh, there. Yeah, who's in Boston? There's Reebok, Puma, Converse, New Balance, um, Saucony. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of them in Boston. Boston's like a real big sneaker city, and no one really realizes it. No, people do realize it, bro. I mean, uh, consumers, I mean. I don't think they realize that, like, it's all, Okay, yeah. Yeah, like, there's a bunch of companies in that city. It's Portland and Boston, kind of, that are, you know, mass. Them, yeah. Because, I mean, I don't consider Timberland, like, a Boston brand, but it is in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. which is, like, 45, you know, you could drive there. It's, yeah. like, right there. Um, a lot of that shit's right there, man. But... Yeah, I don't know, man. Just I, something about it. I was just like, I kind of get it, but you could have went a, a different direction for me. Like I, like I said, bro. You know, sometimes you look at some of these brands and you don't know what what they're getting paid on the back end, what they, what kind of royalties they're. Yeah, getting. it's true. So you start looking like, all right, maybe Nike or maybe you know Adidas was gonna only give them this, and they were only gonna give them this, and and a small capsule and or a small percentage, and they weren't gonna let them. And maybe New Balance, like, fuck it, we'll give you. The bag will give you, you know, that that's what sometimes, it, you know, a lot of people don't don't realize. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's uh, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, the Cardi B and Reebok actually makes a lot of sense to me. I think that style, that retro style mm-hmm. works really well for her as far as sneakers go. Yeah. And, and once again, I mean, I think Reebok is, is saying, hey, we need a big uh, swing. I mean, yeah, you know, Adidas, yeah. Adidas is killing them in terms of. The uh, the rapper entertainer umbrella that of they course. have, you yeah, know? and and Nike is you know just Nike, but I mean when you just look at Adidas and you see like guys like you see people like Beyonce and Kanye and fucking you know and Big Sean and Pusha T and all these entertainers, and you got, you already know Nike brings to the table in terms of their guys, and then Reebok is like, well listen, let's swing and let's let's pay Cardi B. Out the ass to you know what I mean, and they I they probably to me have had the most blunders of a brand Reebok, Reebok? yeah, with their talent. I mean, because if, if you look at the roster they've they've had over over the years, so at the same time they had Jay Z and Fifty Cent, yeah, two thousand three, two thousand four ish, that flopped, that ended up not working out. Yeah, which is I, to this day I always wondered why the uh, S dot. Well, I, I knew why they didn't, but I mean. It just yeah, it just flopped in the in the G unit joints. Yeah. You know? Well, the G unit partly I think had to do with the game and all that shit that was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, because then West Coast was like, "Yo, we not wearing Reeboks because G unit's a part of Reebok." Um, but I mean, like even the Rick Ross thing was handled very poorly when he oh, was the, he had a partnership and he yeah. brought like Meek Mill around and shit. And he did the Molly drop the Molly. And yeah. She won't even know. It. And then Reebok kind of just like they dropped him, right? Yeah, Reebok dropped him like immediately, and that's when Swiss was very prominent. In the ownership of the brand, and they were doing shit. I remember because I was still in the building there. They were doing shit like for free, like dropping like songs and videos and shit, just trying to really promote. Because Swiss was like, "I'm a part owner, so I'm gonna really elevate this shit." Mm-hmm. And having someone like Ross, who's a one of the best B acts we've had as far as rap goes. What do you mean? What's a okay for the people listening? What's a B act? What do you mean? I would consider well, he's like, how do I how would I explain this? So like Jay Z. 
Kanye, Travis Scott, all these guys Drake, are Fifty Cent. They're, they're, all these guys, though, I would consider those A acts. So like, are, they sell out arenas. You know what I mean? Okay. But Ross, I don't think could sell an arena, but he's a very well respected rapper. Understood. Okay. Yeah. So that's why he was a he's a B act. You know what I mean? Okay, like, so is that like a and you know is that is that some is that an industry term or is that just something you? Uh, I th- that might be an industry term because there's A side, B side. Okay. So that's what I'm considering like the back end hit. Okay. So yeah, but Ross like and he had Meek around. He was having like kind of Wale float around. I remember not mm-hmm. necessarily in the building, but he kind of because you know he's a Nike guy. But it's like you start having all of your Maybach guys doing shit for free. For free, yeah. You know what I mean? Swiss is there and shit, and they're just like, nah, get out of here. Yeah. With the which I I mean I get the hard stance, but it's also like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like no, I understand. You could bounce back from that, and then Kendrick they didn't really capitalize on. He was in the building for a minute, but I don't remember. He, I remember the announcement and then nothing. Really? Yeah, you know, like, do you remember him doing anything? I, I just don't remember, remember anything. He, yeah, I don't remember anything he did either. Yeah, and so even basketball, like they had John Wall. He was supposed to be the new Iverson. But I mean, if, you know, when we start thinking about stuff, when we start talking about John, guys like John Wall, John Wall, he never had the cultural impact of Iverson. So yeah, I understand what you're yeah. saying. I think, I think, and to be honest with you, I know this is going to sound crazy. I think. Um, Allen Iverson's uh, his stint with Reebok. I mean, you know, you always have the questions and all the answers and all that shit. But yeah. to me, it never popped as much as I thought it. And you know, and I think Iverson, at least in my opinion, yeah, I feel like with Reebok with Allen Iverson, it. You know how like Nike and how they marketed Jordan and LeBron James and even like I don't think. I don't think Reebok did that as much. With I, they weren't able to. I, I mean, they made their money, I'm sure, and you know, and he, yeah, he's had some memorable sneakers, but I just don't. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened there because I was too young to pay attention to the marketing and stuff. Okay, I wasn't really. I mean, he was my favorite player, but I wasn't paying attention to like uh, mm. to the way I am now. I'll say. But, yeah, man. I mean, I think what they're going to try to do now, because I've seen them try to, like, retro. Because remember, they came out with the 4.5s, but they took away the zipper. Um, yeah, the, last year, I think it was they took away the zipper with the 4.5s. Actually, I, th- I remember you shitting on me because I liked them. Um, <laughs> and you say, when you say 4.5s, you mean the... The answer fours. Okay. They just didn't have the zipper. Okay. So that, Yeah, and then they were doing the mashup stuff. I think they're really going to try to go back... To a lot of his early catalog and try to push that stuff because the question is going to sell every time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, sir, yeah. you know, like you have to realize a retro of the first first couple models are always, you know, Solid. coveted. Yeah, they're definitely. always they're one of those like you know people they either destroy their pair or the pair is so old that people yeah. are like we want those. But then the other stuff that you know that came along, you know how like you look at. You know how you like, for example, like I, you know, you look at a pair of, you look at LeBron and 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 the, you know, he's obviously he has like sixteen, seventeen models at this point, and he's had you know mashups, whether it was you know LeBron soldiers, yeah, which are you know is like basketball sneakers and other things, you know, I, and I don't, maybe I'm just dumb or 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 not uh, You're or dumb ignorant, ass, but. yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm ignorant to the to the Allen Iverson line, but I just don't feel like it was. Yeah, I don't. I, I I wish I had more information. You know, because when I go back home next week, I'm supposed to go to the campus. But I'll try. I'll try to figure something. Out. I'll be like, hey, what happened here? Got you. Okay. <laughs> Can someone up- update me? Because I don't remember. But mm. um, yeah, man. I mean, if if they do go back to his early stuff, uh, which I hope they do, because a lot of that stuff is just fuego. Mm. Uh, I mean, they did a couple of them last year. They had the red toe and blue toe questions. Um, okay. Not last year. I mean, they did a year. I mean, whatever. They were coming back with stuff, but because a lot of the, a lot of Cardi's stuff that she's sort of promoting under her umbrella is just retro stuff. Like okay. it's just like freestyles, Aztecs, um, just some more of the simple like core mm-hmm. Reebok models. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, they got pop colors and shit around. You know what I mean? It's like very Cardi looking. But that commercial was weird, dude. I don't know if you saw it. I did not see the commercial. Uh, she's at a beauty salon getting her hair done. And uh, she's talking to somebody, and they realize her shoe's untied. Mm-hmm. So they, <laughs> her nails grew and then tied it yeah. and then g- fell back. And then they were talking about boys. The boys? Yeah. I was like, ah, this is okay. All okay. right. I don't know. Eh, good for you guys. <laughs> Even Alicia Keys was, oh, yeah, because of Swiss, duh. The Swiss. But Alicia Keys was over there, too. 
Yeah. Man, they really fucked up. Yeah, man. They definitely did fuck up, man. <laughs> Speaking of fucked up, uh, another rapper who has uh, who who has brand affiliations with, uh, what was it? Who was he with? Uh, not Under Armour, but uh, ASAP Rocky. Oh, yeah. He's in jail. It, it, was it, he's with ASAP? He, he was. He was. He was. I think they, no, the, that contract terminated. Um, because I don't know. They came out with that one D- uh, DC inspired, no, Osiris inspired oh. shoe. Okay. Uh, that skate shoe. And then. Uh, I think that flopped kind of, so then he dipped. And then uh, fast forward, he went to Sweden, uh, slapped a guy, and now he's in jail. Now he's in jail, and now uh, President Trump tweeted that he uh, he spoke to his good friend Kanye West, <laughs> who is now trying to, uh, they are now trying to get ASAP Rocky out of a Swedish jail. Uh, I think the greatest part is <laughs> the tweet. Uh, Are you going to read it? I'm going to read the tweet because I thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was, uh, just spoke to, Don, President Trump just spoke to Kanye West about his friend ASAP Rocky's incarceration. I will be calling the very talented Prime Minister of Sweden to see what we can do about helping ASAP Rocky. So many people would like to see this quickly resolved. Uh, I think the only thing I think Trump did mess up on, I don't think he meant to call the Prime Minister of Sweden very talented. talented? Yeah, I was I about think, to say, that's just crazy. I think he meant to say that for ASAP Rocky, but just... <laughs> Just fucking mash him up and, uh, you know. The very, t- the very talented. He's, I, when he ministers, he's very talented as he primes he, it. Yes, man. Uh, when he primes his ministering, it's really something to watch. Hilarious, man. Uh, <laughs> it's just so stupid. Oh, oh fuck, man. Uh, you know, listen, man. I don't, you know, I don't know the foreign policy. I don't know what, what happens in, you know, other countries when you. And I do know. I did listen to uh, DJ Esco uh, in uh, Futures. Uh, was it uh, 56, 56 Nights? Or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Fifty Six Nights? F- yeah, Fifty Six Nights. Yeah, that was. Uh, that's the shit with um fucking March Madness on it. Yes, Fifty Six Nights, man. And one of the one of the greatest uh, mixtapes. Uh, that you know of recent time of uh it was i mean listen i know in the streaming era that is a great I mean, mixtape i mean listen free at last never going to lose purple coming in diamonds from africa no compadre march madness which is still to this march day march madness is one of my favorite songs ever. period yes. period so I, you know, I, I I don't know what goes on in foreign countries, but I mean, <laughs> you know, I think the penalties seem pretty severe when you. Uh, well, they're trying to make an example out of them, which yeah. is not fair. Well, yeah, and and I think when you're, you know, when you're an American, you know, a do, prominent Black American, yeah, you in know, Sweden, that you can, you know, really get an example out of. Yeah, you they're know. like using him as a bargaining chip. They're like, yo, we got your boy. Yeah, that's like uh, that's like the fucking uh, Levar Balls kid. Yeah, when he went to uh, when he went to China and then the whole and the UCLA kids stole the so st- the fucking sunglasses from uh, was it Louis Vuitton or some shit like I don't that. Know. Yeah, it you know it's like dude man listen you know you go to other countries man and and their drug uh, laws are very strict and you know if you get caught you're fucked. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I just, tell, just how crazy is the world where it's like Kanye West calls President Donald Trump to get ASAP Rocky out of a Swedish jail. Sounds that like, sentence is j- insane. Yes, it does. F- yeah, free ASAP. Free ASAP. Free the mob. <laughs> I, I, I said I said on Instagram yesterday, I said, man, if Trump pulls up to Sweden wearing an ASAP EMS t-shirt to get ASAP Rocky out of jail, I said, man, we're going to we're gonna have to really reconsider 2020, man. It's going to be <laughs> tougher than we thought, man. <laughs> Be fucking tough, man. I'm like, damn, this nigga got fucking ASAP out of jail, nigga. Joe Biden, man. Oh man, this is gonna be tough. Who do I go for? But um, you know, you don't. You, we don't know, man. It's uh, it's just a. It's just hilarious. I thought, I thought I found that very funny, man. Yeah, that shit is fucking. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, sub podcast. Uh, episode number seventy two. Uh, you could follow me at notthatchini dot com. Um, at notthatchini on uh, social media platforms. Uh, L, what do you got? Uh, you can follow me LZD three two five. You already know what it is. Your boy LZD Tribute Star Web Star World Star Everyday Star. You already know what it is. Getting money, <laughs> hoe fucking bitches, s- selling drugs, doing cocaine left and right. You know what it is. We shooting at the fo fo po po all day slow slow. Your bitch know that my fo fo got more dolls than a Honda Accord, bitch. Uh, I, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I don't even know what I said there, but... Uh, <laughs> that was poetry. That was poetry in motion. You did. <laughs> and I just, like I said, go on YouTube and watch, listen to us, watch us. Yeah, uh, tell somebody about this podcast. Uh, tell fucking, a friend to tell a friend. Yeah, go to our Patreon. Oh, shit, we got to plug that more. Because um, I got some 
fucking fire shit that's going to be on there uh, by next, I don't know when this you guys are going to listen to this, but it's coming out soon. Yeah, it's going to come out soon. It's um, going to be fire, boy. Yeah, at Sup Podcast NYC, you fucking cold ass ducks. Uh, anything else, Al? Nah, we good, man. This is a great, great two party. You're going to love it. Uh, you're going to love it, and you're going to keep listening, and we out this biatch. All right, peace. Peace. Um, wait, I'm going to do one more thing where I plug the Patreon. Um, yeah. Um, Hey guys, go to iTunes, give us a review, five stars. Go check out our Patreon for Sub Podcast. And also go to remember to be happy.com with the number two to check out our merch. Uh, and that's it, you motherfuckers. What up, guys? This is Sub Podcast, episode 72, part two of Crazy True Sentences. Uh, I just wanted to announce up top that this is the second half of the episode. So if you haven't listened to the first half, please go to last week's episode, check that out. Come back here, listen to the whole goddamn thing. And then also, uh, there's an exclusive Patreon episode up now. Uh, I was in Boston, and I happened to be linking with Frank the Butcher. I was like, yo, dude, let's uh, let's meet up, chop it up. I've been hung with you in a minute. Um, I also wanted to see some other Reebok fam, and I did. Um, I love those guys. So, bonus episode, Patreon, me and Frank, we chopped it up. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, here we go. Crazy True Sentences, part two. Um, you know, also I, I saw that was in the news. That was, that's funny to me. Is that uh, Diddy is bringing back making the band? Oh, really? Yeah, and I know it's it's kind of outside of our wheelhouse to talk about like a TV show like this, but I think it's going to be so interesting because of the, the fashion that they're going to have on there. Well, I mean, it was the last time uh, making the band was fucking Sean John at. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, but he's not really. He doesn't really have that right yeah, now. So now he's gonna he's gonna have everyone in the house wearing Ciroc t shirts. <laughs> yeah, it's just the Ciroc boys in the Ciroc building. boys in the building, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a Ciroc ad, bro. Um yeah. If they don't have Dylon on the show at some capacity, I'm gonna be very upset. Why why would they have Dylon or Sarah or any of those people that Because Dylon's top five and you know that. Dude's your top Dylon, Dylon, <laughs> Dylon, <laughs> Dylon, Dylon. Yeah, that was a... Uh, I mean, dude, that was so. I mean, I feel like this is a retro show, bro. We talk about everything from 15 years ago, bro. Well, I know, but that's what's interesting, though. All this stuff is coming back. I mean, we've we've spoken about it how like the circle gets tighter and tighter. But I mean, like that show was so prominent as because like it was a Sean John ad. But it, and, like that that shit really got people to go out and buy that stuff because everyone was like, "Yo, Diddy got these guys. They're gonna be the next big things yeah. or whatever." But if it that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a if it's gonna be a bunch of retro. Like, how are they gonna style it? It's just interesting to me. Yeah, it is. Interesting. Thinking about it, it is very interesting, bro. I don't know, man. But I saw that shit. That shit's funny. I mean, if there's ever a show that I would like to come back from 15 years ago, making the band would definitely be one of them. Because one of them, right? <laughs> just shut down the studio. <laughs> just, so I just and they're gonna be SoundCloud rapper kids. You know what I mean? It's just a whole different vibe. Is this confirmed? Is this or is this like one of those things? I'm just assuming. You're assuming. Yeah, I mean, because the, the people... I know it is it is coming out. It is coming back. But there's just the type of artist they would have. It, it would have to be like one of these sound clips. It's like Uzi Vert type of dudes, Pump type of dudes, face tats, weird hair, mm -hmm. mumbles. And that's not even like... Yeah, I just want to see it. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I, I want to see it, too. Uh, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be interesting, man. Um... It's gonna be interesting to see if that comes back out. Speaking of things uh, coming back out, you know, and, and and we are we are a fashion podcast, and and I feel like I want to talk about one of the one a uh, comedian who arguably wore one of the most fashionable outfits ever in the history of uh, comedy. Uh, Eddie Murphy supposedly uh, oh back to stand up seventy million deal with Netflix uh, allegedly you know allegedly we don't know yeah the, we don't know the full uh, you know um, we don't know the full. Uh, scope of it, but it definitely seems like um, no. When he was still doing stand up, he was a fashion icon with those leather suits. Yeah, that's Jesus what I'm Christ! You, know, you got to. I mean, dude, that, that is something that that was worn that can never be uh, duplicated. No. And, and I actually, I actually watched his uh, his uh, comedians in cars uh, with Jerry Seinfeld. How was that? Oh, it was amazing. I didn't watch it yet. It was amazing. I mean, that whole comedians in cars getting coffee is uh, it's dope. It is. Um, and and to watch Eddie and you know see here's my only thing and 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 I think for the listeners out there who are into uh, stand up, uh, the things that Eddie said in the eighties is, is insane. So insane. Yeah, I mean you can't say that now. You get extremely in trouble. 
Well, you know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't. You know. The there would mo- be a rally outside my house if I quoted any of the beginning five minutes. Well, that's what I'm saying. The moment, <laughs> you know, he says the wrong thing, there's going to be think yeah. pieces immediately. Of course, dude. People go to Dave Chappelle's uh, shows just to fucking, like, write think pieces on the New York Times about how he's like, oh, he's he's still confused about, trans- like, transgender people. Like, he, they go for him to say wild shit. Yeah. And then so they could write. So I just wonder about Eddie, but like I said, he's a legend. And and that's the top five man outfits that I've ever seen in the comedy. Wait, special. delirious or raw? Pause. Delirious because of, of the red. Yeah, the red. And then he, yeah. he was fucking YG in it. You yeah, know he mean? was. You know what I mean? He inspired YG and all these other rappers to to be bold, you know what I mean? Buzzing. And um and then, you know, uh Raw was dope. He had the blue joint. Yeah, Raw was dope. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you. I mean, how many uh, how many comedians have worn like something crazy? Like I, I feel like comedians downplay what they wear on their specials now. Cat Williams, velour. Yeah, Cat had a yeah. Eddie Murphy, leather. Um, that leather was so iconic that even Amy Schumer was like, "I have to have a leather special." Oh yeah, the leather special. Which she, that was not a oh boy, that was the really beginning of the end for Netflix and comedy, if you ask me. But uh. Let me try to think. Yeah. Yeah, Cat Williams is fucking up there, dude. Fashionable. I mean, shout out to Rob Hayes for the babe tie on late night. Um, young babe tie to God. Uh, the, nothing really that... Nothing like that, like Cat or Eddie, as of recent, unless you can correct me if I'm wrong. I can't think of anything that's that was so iconic. Comedians like that today don't take risks. They just wear babe. They just wear bape. Yeah, it's like the new, like fashion statement as a comedian. You think, you think comedians like? I, I I don't think that's. I don't think bape is that. I mean, bape was like a just a statement to offer all streetwear, but like th- no one really does anything like that identifiable like that. That's like an special. Yeah, I think it's like toned down. I don't know if it's toned down. You wear you wear a suit. Or, I mean, because the weird thing about being a comedian is they tell you not to wear anything distracting because it will take away from your jokes, right? So that's why for the longest time uh, you either wore a suit like John Mulaney to be very presentable, Ronnie Dangerfield, that type of shit, or you just wore a black tee and jeans. You did like the Steve Jobs type of shit where you tried to play it low so then your joke spoke. Uh, But yeah, man, no one really does anything crazy as far as being a comedian in fashion anymore. Like People like Rob or Nori when he wore the bulletproof vest, like those are two things that as a recent where i was kind of like oh shit i'm not even saying like they were like you know grandiose statements that were like yeah you so uh for the listeners out there nori davis uh he did a conan set and he wore a bulletproof vest with his name on it yeah um rob hayes he did uh jimmy fallon late night uh and he wore a, a bathing ape tie uh with the suit I, with the suit yeah and um but yeah you don't i think just a lot of comedians in general aren't really like Fashionable it would, not into fashion Do you think he's gonna wear the leather When he does the special Oh Eddie Murphy Yeah I mean well that's if he does And I I don't know man I think it would You know I think obviously that would That's what people expect or want Have to dude But yeah I just I just honestly just I we, And we've had this discussion many times on, on this podcast I just feel like Comedy is not one of those professions where like you go to if you you go to a rap concert right and you yeah. expect you you expect to see a motherfucker wearing his fifty thousand dollar chains mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying all his fucking earrings his bling his diamonds and, and some fly shit you know you don't go to a, a a comedy like you know because I think with comedy I think we're the comedians are so busy trying to prove to the average person that hey look at me I'm just like you uh huh. You know, where rappers are like, nah, nigga, I'm way better than you, man. I got your bitch <laughs> in my car. I'm getting all this money, and look at me. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's, um, I think that's a huge thing. It's something completely different. But yeah, I, like I said, Eddie Murphy shit. That's what made I think Eddie bigger or larger than life in a sense. It did help him a lot because everyone was like, look, check that outfit, dude. Ch- and, check him out in general. And and you telling me in in 1983. Or whenever you know when Deli- when uh, Delirious came out, how many comics were really doing that type of shit? None. I, None. I don't think. I mean, D- I, Delirious was the first special I ever watched. I think it was probably mine too. Yeah. You know? I mean, my dad had it. I yellow VHS. Does that sound familiar? I remember That's the cover familiar. being yellow. Yeah. Um, 
I didn't even really know who Eddie Murphy was or anything, but my dad was like, yo, this guy's the shit. And I was like, all right. Eddie Murphy, you a funny motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you, Eddie Murphy. Like, it's just <laughs> so many quotables, man. But, I mean, you know, like I said, man, comics are very, uh, very low-key. So when you see a comic that's, like, flashy, yeah, I think that's good, man. Be who you are, man. I can't wait to see your Jaspers on Conan. On Conan? <laughs> on, on Late Night, man? If I, yeah. Listen, man. I'm keeping them, I guess, for a reason, man. I don't know. You know, uh, f- uh, my favorite brand, Chinatown Market, did a collab with Conan. They did a collab with Conan? Yeah, you didn't see that? No, it's hilarious. Hold on, cover me. I'll pull it up on my phone. All right. So, uh, you know, it's it's a heat wave. Uh, if you ain't got no AC, get your AC working, biatch. <laughs> get your motherfucking AC working, biatch. It's hot as shit. You dig? Conan... Chinatown. And, um... Yeah, dude, they got shit, like, with just uh, his face on it. And, uh... Hold up. And I stand by my, um... Constant berating of Chinatown Market that they're a bad brand. But, uh... Shout out to Conan for doing something with them. That's kind of cool. But, yeah, hold up. Yeah, here. So, like, they got, like, this jacket with... That's that's dope, bro. This is not dope. Kind of dope. I mean, I like that. I like that one, the Conan neon sign one. The Chinatown market with his hair is kind of cool, I guess. But, and then they have like a pillow. So if you want to cuddle with cartoon Conan O'Brien, you can do that, I guess. I don't know. Shout out to Conan. Did you? Uh, speaking of collabs, uh, Union and Jordan did another collab that released. Uh, they did. Of, yeah, it was clothing. It was, oh, uh, I didn't know. Yeah, it was clothing. What? Um. Oh, okay. It was uh, it was clothing. Uh, it was like a part two of their uh, another part of their yeah collab. There's rumored to be a a union four, uh, coming out soon. Oh, okay. I'll be down I, with that. I think Jordan, man. Listen, man. They, their their collabs are it, when done properly. They know they they do a great man when when they're giving their collabs an opportunity. So. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, Kyrie's co- what? Uh, just one of my one of my friends, man. He just he just took a picture with David Justice, my favorite baseball player, and then he sent it to me and said, "Eat a dick." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, can we just put, can we just stop this for one second? Yeah. Uh shit! I've never like paused it before. No, not pause. Just you cover me. Oh, I'll, I'll co- oh oh oh! I cover you. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let's let's see here. Uh, bum bum bum. I'm covering uh for my man Lawrence right now, who's talking shit to his friend. Uh, oh, uh, something that I got excited about, Lawrence. Listen in the background is uh, so Kyrie, Nike, and SpongeBob SquarePants are coming out with a capsule that has all the characters have their own shoe. So there's a SpongeBob shoe, a Patrick shoe, a Mr. Krabs, a, Sa- a Sandy, and then uh, one of the other guys, Squidward. That's it. Um, <laughs> that shit's so fucking funny. <laughs> That's another sentence that you would never expect to have actually occurred. Nike, Kyrie Irving, and SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> this shit's so fucking funny. In the same news cycle, Kanye West <laughs> asked Donald Trump to get ASAP Rocky at a Swedish jail, and Kyrie Irving is coming out with a SpongeBob SquarePants collection from Nike. <laughs> oh fuck! I'm excited. I'm I'm excited about you know I'm not a uh, I'm Kyrie's like big in like cartoons and like cereal yeah. and all that shit. Yeah, and like the collabs that he does with Nike is uh is interesting. I mean, it's not something I would. I would really get into, but I, I like, you know, the fact that, you know, he's such a weird guy. And now that he's in Brooklyn, and when I say he's a weird guy, he's, you know, he's the earth is flat and, like, he's just, like, moody at times. Yeah. But to see him in Brooklyn in a major market now, and once again, Boston was a major market, but to see him in the New York City area. Right. The collabs and, and you know, and, and, the and like, him and Kevin Durant, like like we said before, can you, like, can you imagine them at, like, a, you know, at, at a house of hoops or, like, you know, a yeah. foot action? Or, crazy. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be nuts, dude. And then the same thing with, like, uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James in LA, or and, and then also like uh, and fucking um, uh, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. You have all these duos, and then even Houston, which is a, a 
big, you know, Texas is a big market. Yep. And you got like James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Yep. So you have all these like big time basketball players in these major markets. Yes. Whereas, you know, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant at one point were in Oklahoma City, which, you know, and Paul George is in Oklahoma City, which no disrespect to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, but it's not a huge no. sneaker market. Bad. Um, you know, so now you get, you know, you get like Kawhi was in Toronto, which Toronto is a major city. But coming to back to America, you know, these guys are literally going to have like it's going to be like they're going to like make so much money off of just them being marketed in these major cities. Now, I think it's kind of dope. It's interesting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be sick, dude. It is going to be sick, bro. I, I hope there's an event that we can go to with uh, fucking Kyrie and fucking KG there. That'd be fucking cool as shit. I'm good. It'll get shut down. Trust me. No, it won't not get KD, shut down. Not KG. But... Speaking of KG, Kevin Garnett, did you see what happened to him? No, what happened? Bro got to pay like 100 grand a month in uh, spousal and uh, child support. Uh, I a lot of money, but I mean, they said, you know, they said that he... Um, I mean, dude is worth like 150, 300 million dollars. Yeah, but I mean, it's, that's so much money. I know. I that's a whole different thing. I don't want to get into. <laughs> it's just it's the the lifestyle and the show the receipts of where you spend the money, lady. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But <laughs> he's um. He got out of his. I think we covered that. I think we covered it before, but I don't know if a lot of people knew that he had a lifetime contract with Adidas, and he was just like, "Yo, I don't want this anymore." And they were like, "Okay," and he just left. Who KG? Yeah, and then he went to one of the Asian brands. <clears throat> but well, yeah, he was a lifetimer on when the Celtics won in '08. He was still at Adidas. Okay, because I remember he started his career with Nike. Yeah, but then he was at Adidas, and then that's when they did the "Anything Is Possible" campaign after he screamed that after they won in '08. Uh-huh. And then yeah, af- uh, a couple years after that, he was just like, "Yeah, I'm good." And he just really? went to China, yeah, on some China shit. But, damn, man. Yeah, the, the NBA is so... Dude, what a giant reset. I've never seen such a crazy move between players like this in years. Yeah, I know. Actually, probably back when uh, Ray Allen and KG came to the Celtics, was because like, it was a similar time, people were making similar moves back then, but I... That, Probably was the last biggest shift like this, if you ask me. Or if you just talk about LeBron going to the Heat and shit like that. Um, but, but this is such a vast umbrella of people that have moved. Well, the fact that, damn, they're almost, uh, it was like 40% of the NBA was like free agents. Yeah. And then you had guys getting traded, like, you know, Paul George and Westbrook yeah. and Chris Paul. Like, it just makes it like, wow, like, this is, uh, this is uh, something completely different. So... Uh, we shall see, but, um, yeah, let's, uh, you know what, let's, uh, what, let's, uh, let's, oh, let me think, cover, yeah. let's, uh, let's talk about, I'll cover you with, uh, let's talk about <laughs> complex, no, you know what I want to talk about, cause this is, uh, this is good, complex con, yeah, complex con is coming up, it's actually going on right now, is it, oh, was it this weekend, yes, yeah, this weekend, oh, com- um, complex occurred, the, uh, they are raffling off four pairs of the uh, f- off white ones, right? The uh, off white Air Force One MCA, the yeah, uh, the the museum edition blue ones. Four pairs. That's not a lot, that, dude. What? Why would? And they, then now you're you're identifying four people to be targets. Well, for, not only that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the way Complex Con uh, said it, basically, it was like, well, if you got VIP tickets. You got a really good shot at, you know, you got a shot at getting a pair. Yeah. So people buy these VIP tickets for hundreds of dollars, then to find out that it's going to be raffled. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. And and I think, you know, assholes. I think Complex Con is like, uh, I don't know, I'm, I've never been, uh, but I just, you know. Complex Con to me is not. It, it's it's supposed to be. I think it started to be like a trade show. Now it's sort of like a convention. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Comic Con, where there's like panels and people talking shit. The first one, I remember being very surprised at the co- like the complex conversation segments. Um, but now it just doesn't. It. I mean, it seems sort of just like an arbitrary, like weird, just thing to me now. Like it doesn't seem like anything that's doing has much of a purpose or is making any impact, other than for people to go 
do something. It's for people to, yeah. Well, it's all, you know, I mean, a lot of people go there, for, like, for clout. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, you it's, know, look look at my collection or look at, you know, like, these vendors that sell these shits. And, it, and it, you know, like, I mean, last year, uh, what was it? The uh, It was the Pharrell, the, uh, yeah. the Complex Con Pharrell, mm-hmm. uh, NMDs or whatever. And, or what, not NMDs. It, it, NMDs. it was, for, yeah, it was Pharrell something. It, it was, was the human shit, wasn't the human, it? Yeah, the human element. Wait, let's or, look this up to make sure we don't sound stupid. But I'm pretty sure it was like the a uh, complex Pharrell human some shit. Complex con sneakers. Let's just see if that some shit comes up with it. I mean, I like how they're moving it around though, because it was in L.A. Now it's in Chicago. Um, yeah, it was just some NMDs. It was NMDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is like people were going crazy for these, man. Yeah, like you know, and and I think ComplexCon like they 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 love it because it's like the hype goes so crazy that people just fucking flip out. And uh, oh, because this these were the NERD ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to NERD man. Yeah, but yeah, they hit. Yeah, I don't know, man. This was part of the problem with Hype Fest too. Or whatever the, whatever the fucking Hype Beast Festival was too. It's just more people to go and be like, look, I'm here. Even mm-hmm. though there was nothing really going on, mm-hmm. um, I would like to go to a complex con at some point if they have one in New York. I'm not traveling to go to that shit, but yeah, I mean, you know, I get them moving it around though. I like that because having th- one thing here all the time it is kind of not fair. You should be able to move around and have people. You should, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, just like the sneaker cons, they all move around. Yeah. Like all these just move. Man, listen, you know, it's just like it's like the, it's like a. Uh, sport all star game, bro. Moves around from place from city to yeah. city. Yeah, you know? and then you can get excited for when the it's gonna happen at that place. Like there you go for when like all star games in New York. That dude, New York is tight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the the one time I lived here and they had it, it was fucking sweet, dude. No, I feel you. <laughs> just even because there's more people doing stuff. There's like more parties around, even if it's not affiliated. Just because someone like from LA is around, they're like, "Yo, we're going out over here." It's like, oh, "All right, yeah, I'll go meet up with you." You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then I always like watching people because uh, they have like the they're playing Buddy Pass Olympics. They're fucking sitting <laughs> in the airport all day because they can't get a flight back because they only have Buddy Passes. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, dude. I don't know why you thought Friday night was gonna be the best time for you to go back home, you, dude. You're here till Monday. You're here till Monday afternoon. Hilarious. <laughs> you're stuck with us. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, uh, this shit is so fucking funny. <clears throat> um. You know, kind of piggyback off the Virgil thing, though. I don't know if you've seen it, but they did open that new Louis Vuitton store on Orchard Street. It's a pop-up shop, Louis Vuitton pop-up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I went down there. Man, that shit is gross. What do you mean gross? There's just giant green piece of shit building. Mm, yeah. Okay. So I've um for the listeners, this is what is it? Rivington and Orchard? No, that doesn't make any sense. What is that? It's oh Ludlow and Orchard. Okay. So by Katz's Deli. Um, literally a block from Katz's Deli, there's that uh, giant green pop-up shop. Mm. Uh, I didn't go in, but it was mobbed. But, dude, it just st- stuck out like a sore thumb. That's, well, that, and I think everything Virgil does usually sticks out. Like, yeah, it was some... I was just, it's just just disgusting really? looking building, though, yeah. Really? I mean, green and orange is not a colorway that tends to look um, no, that I appealing. I understand what you're saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly green with the orange pop and shit, but, I mean... Got a lot of buzz around it. Really? Yeah. Some of my homeboys are helping that. Well, yeah. I don't want to say their name. They might get mad, but they're helping out with that. And I kind of was looking at them going like, "Eh, guys, can you get it? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, man. Next time I'm down there for whatever reason, if I got if I got a show in that area, or yeah, Yeah, I might just I I don't know how long the pop ups open for, but I mean, you know, um, if if I can go in there and get in and get out, I'll just I'll take a quick look. Yeah, you know, I'll take a quick look at that and and go from there, bro. Yeah, man. Um, trying to. Th- oh, you know what else was cool that I saw? What up? Um, they're only. This is a limited time thing. Uh, so I guess New Balance for the 30th anniversary is doing like a randomized sample lab thing. Okay. So if when you, because I guess it's the 30th anniversary of the 1500 or something. Okay. So when you buy one of these sample lab anniversary editions, you don't know the colorway you're gonna get. It's all randomized. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you, whatever you buy, you just get it, and that's what it is. And there's, I I don't I can't say there's not going to be another of that. Yeah. But from what I understand, it, there's just going to be very. They're all going to be pretty much different from one another. So I like that idea. That's pretty cool, dude. 
That's a that's a good way for a factory to get a bunch of scrap shit together and just go like, hey, let's take a gamble here, baby. Um, we got uh, there's also there's uh, rumors floating around that uh, 2020 the uh, the All Star Jordan will be the Jordan One Chicago's. They're gonna but like in high cut, like a old the OG mold is coming out. Oh, so we got Jordan One in Chicago. It was remastered in 2015. Yep, in the and remaster now, program. And part of the remaster program now, they're talking about like the the original cut because the All Star Game is going to be in Chicago. So does that excite you as a Jordan head? As a Jordan, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I'll be honest with you, man. When it when it comes to Jordan Ones now, like I I like I've only thing I really keep in my closet now is like the colors, the original colors, like the. The fucking Chicago's, the the Breads, the Royals, the you know what I mean? Like those mm-hmm. are, like the those, and then you know, obviously I have my my shattered backboard versions, and you know, and, and off whites, but the old G's is where it's at, bro. I agree. I would like to see because it's not going to be the original mold. Like what they're going to do is they're going to remake the original mold. Well, but it's not because they're not going to use the same exact thing. So I would just like to see. How close it gets to the first sort of cl- fit. Like well, yeah, they, you know, they always, they always, you know, there's always something missing, or something off. But uh, supposedly, like, it's supposed to be '85's New Beginnings, and it's supposed to be, uh, uh, it's supposed to be the the real deal. Yeah, yeah, dude. That, like, how did you hear that? I didn't hear this. Uh, I mean, this must have missed my. It's all good. My the, news cycle. Yeah, the the blogs picked it up, and um, and usually like when blogs are, have some type of inclination, they're pretty uh, on point. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, I'm looking forward to grabbing another pair. I could definitely use a um, another OG Chicago, another one. But um, let's do it, man. Like you know, <laughs> I mean, but also, man, you never know because they got. They got Gentry at the helm, and I've already told you, man, when uh, Gentry Humphrey is at the helm of Jordan Brand, there's always some fuckery going on. <laughs> I don't like, man, this dude is a weird guy, man. He fucked up the <laughs> he fucked up the shattered backboard 3.0s. Yeah, that one. Uh, that, yeah. that shit looks like, you know, the, the patent leather looks like crumpled, disgusting patent leather. You know, I <laughs> it's interesting to see crumpled patent leather. I never thought mm-hmm. of anyone trying that and i know why now because it yeah it looks terrible no it just looks it looks fucking it looks terrible. like it's about to fall apart it looks disgusting <laughs> he and you know and that's what i'm saying like the the first shattered backboard was like you know the it was like it was molded after it, what was it like it, it, it i can't think of a jordan that it was because it was like you know it was like a bread toe but it was before the bread toe so the way it was set up it was executed like a sh- like a bread but with white you remember the, sh- the first shattered backboards? Yeah, uh, there was nothing like it to me. Yeah, at the time. I guess. Yeah, because I guess it was sort of like inverted. Now that you put it that way, it was. But yeah, okay. Then the second one was like a Chicago, but with white. Yeah, with orange, white and orange. And then the third one was supposed to be, everyone said based off of the, the black and red, uh, Jordan one. It was supposed to be that was supposed to be the third backboard. And then Gentry got back in charge, and then it was like, no, let's just fuck it up and. <laughs> Those sat ones are still my favorite. Mm-hmm. The fucking lady version. They're also releasing a satin satin Chicago. Are they? Is it satin Chicago or satin bread toe? I believe it's uh, uh, not bread toe, but a uh, black toe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Damn. Wow. Well, now I'm 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 now I'm just looking at the, the satin ones, and I'm like, damn, they're so pretty. Fuck, I want these shoes so bad. Fuck. So much money. I'm never going to get them. <laughs> you are, bro. Maybe. We, we, we're going to make so much money soon off of <laughs> fucking stand up that we're going to buy houses and we're going to buy 30 grand worth of kicks, man. That'd be fire. I'd fucking do it in a heartbeat, man. <laughs> I'm about to, uh, yeah, man. So we got that. We got those coming out. And, um,. So and then we got uh are you uh black and red uh elevens coming out for Christmas. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone's covered it yet. Actually, I, don't, I haven't even seen this in the the news cycle yet. But uh, Adidas, because you're talking about stuff coming out and stuff. Adidas is ending their consortium line. Really? Yeah. 
because I just didn't, didn't do that well. Really? Yeah, and I don't know why. I mean, I guess I kind because they were a, the consortium was a weird thing because it was supposed to be like a, I guess like a higher end Adidas, but not Y three high end. Mm-hmm. So I think it tried to fit like a middle ground. And I guess it just never popped. But yeah, they're really? discontinuing all consortium stuff. At least that's what I was told. I was at a party last night, uh, a clothing brand party, and uh, they were talking about how they're. Their Adidas is not having any more consortium stuff because we're, we're talking about what they were buying and what they bought for this season. Okay. And um, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're not doing consortium anymore. And I was like, whoa, they put a lot of money into consortium. Wow. So, um, it, that really threw me off guard. And I, but I don't know exactly what they. I'm trying to think. Was the 4D ship part of consortium? I think it was. Right. I'm not sure. When we first started the podcast, that's when that shit was kind of rumored to come around, and it didn't last that long. We're really? like, it didn't even, yeah. The f- okay. Adidas, Adidas 4D. Let me just see if it comes up with consortium tags. If I just Google this shit, you know what I'm talking about, right? The uh, the soul. I do know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, they have that under Futurecraft. Yeah, maybe maybe this is a separate thing, but I think it's because the ZX4000 I thought was a consortium model. I mean, either way, it's just super interesting what the, like that. They're just like, yeah, I guess we'll just give up. Not even like a, not even, yeah. <laughs> don't even try to like <laughs> flip it again or mm. pl- like maybe have it become Y three or just have it right re- be regular they Adidas. Just, but yeah, they just kind of, I guess they're just throwing it out, man. I guess that shit happens sometimes. Yeah, bro. So you sent me a uh, interesting article last night, but our f- our friend, our peer, mm-hmm. uh, Dina Hashem, uh, she's getting. Uh, pretty bulldozed by uh the xxx tentacion community because of a joke she made on the comedy seller uh this week at the seller show which uh aside from the joke it's the joke itself is not important i think it's more of the how people are attacking her for just making a joke about his death in general yeah i mean we've i mean we we've had a discussion about the kid on our podcast yeah in the past well you know and I, and I think I remember saying that is you know it's 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 pain it sucks to for you know even with all of his his past you know trans transgressions uh-huh. uh for him to be murdered you know you never want to see anyone that young I think he was like 20 or 21 uh to be murdered you don't you don't want that you know I, I feel like you know there's so many people have changed their life for the better and um, you know when Dina made the joke, I, I I thought it was I thought it was funny. I thought it was clever. I thought it was it was well written. And um, and it just goes to show you, um, you know, obviously, I getting death threats is is unacceptable in any form. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense where they're they're mad about a joke about someone getting murdered, and then their retaliation is to say that they will murder you. Say that they <laughs> murder you. What's wrong with you guys? I mean, the main point that I think that we want to get to here is that, like, uh, guys, when comedians make a joke, it's a joke. That's it. Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, it's definitely a joke, and I, and I feel like um, I feel like there's been... Uh, I feel like comedians are, are, are heavily policed by people. Yeah. And, you know, every time a comedian makes an, an, a joke that a group of people do not like, the first thing people want them to do is apologize you apologize because what you said was inappropriate yeah right and i think comedians a lot of time the shit they say are inappropriate much like you know other artists rap musicians rappers sometimes a a entertainer is not going to say the most appropriate thing yeah and and i think but what what we're not what we're not understanding is i i watch there's so many like rappers and entertainers that condemned her for the joke like Jordan Lucas was like you know this is you know this is unacceptable and you know and and I think I think obviously you you it's 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 kind of like getting doxxed I just it's it's you know it's that thing that we comedians always point out and it's like it's everyone takes things as a joke until it's something that you care about mm-hmm. and the hypocrisy of the idea like it's okay to joke about one thing and not the other is the main point here and it's like guys just she's a good person and she's a great person she's like, a, so nice so nice bro I, you know and she's a great right joke writer yeah great joke and writer. that's all that that was was a mm-hmm. was a joke mm-hmm. so you guys gotta calm down just jesus christ just reading shit about her on the internet just people oh my god yeah 
I I, just, I mean, I mean, you said this before off mic, but um, you know, she's gonna pull out of this, and I think uh, be stronger after it and have a lot of tension on her that she can capitalize on as far as yeah. showing the talent that we all no, know I she mean, has. I think that yeah, I mean, the, the takeaway. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, you know, you don't want to have to not live. You don't have to live in fear because I mean, obviously, I, you know, someone said that you know she. She canceled her shows. Comedy Central obviously they pulled the clip. Yeah, and you know, and you're getting you're you know you you went from just being a normal you know living a normal life doing your normal comedian shit, and then to getting death threats by thousands upon thousands of people. Obviously that that's gonna fuck with you. It's dude. This is another sentence I never thought I would hear. Mm. Is academics posting Tina Hashem joke about XXX Tentacion? Really? That's so. That's the name of this episode, I think. It's just crazy sentences. Because, like, this crazy sentences that we've just talked about in this one session mm-hmm. with the Aesop thing and the fucking SpongeBob and then this, it's like, I wouldn't even. I thought it was wild when Michelle Wolf got on World Star from the. Uh, Presidential. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> just the when. Correspondence dinner, yeah. When um, just friends I know get on, like, big black media outlets, it's just that would have never checked them. Have never looked at them before. Mm-hmm. Like, we know who Academics is. Dina does not know who Academics is at all. But for those two worlds to collide, right. insane. Yeah, and and but you know, the, I think the thing about it is, you know, definitely she she made a joke, and and uh, and once again, the joke it was not offensive. I think people just people get to the point where they, you know, obviously the man had the man had many fans. Yeah. And people, you know, they, you know, a, a life was taken too soon. But yeah. at the same time, um, I think, you know, we get to the point where we put, we like, if you may, if a comedian for the most part makes a joke about Trump or, you know, a figure that isn't beloved, yeah, it's like, go and get that motherfucker, get him. But, you know, this guy, obviously his base it increased after his death but it's like you know I, I just did a show recently where comic talked about r kelly and the audience was like we don't want to hear that we love r kelly no way it was you could tell it was very it was like we still fuck with r kelly like not we we fuck with him musically right and you know and that's just like michael jackson same thing you know people still love michael jackson so yeah but i think the joke like i said it wasn't a bad joke and um and to like I said, anytime you know you Chris, you don't you can you imagine doing a joke and then people are like, I'll fucking come to your house and kill you and I'll yeah, it's insane. And then giving your your ad your parents or your address that you lived at prior that maybe your family lives at or they put your telephone number on social media. So yeah, it's people insane. can call it's just it's too much, man. So um you know, I just you know, once again I you know, I think when it dies down and you know and and um, it will, and and I think just Dina will be a, a lot better. Yeah, uh, she'll be a lot better for it, and um, and it, and I think it'll, uh, you know, the only only thing it can do is make you stronger. Yeah, and I think the people in in Kami and, and her like super close friends, I think, you know, just have to just you know be there and and you know as much as you can. I think all of us as comedians just have to be like, hey, it's all right, you know, and and um, yeah, comics definitely have to have her back. That's not cool. Yeah, I think comics definitely you know need to. Because you never know. It could be you telling a joke and that you think is, you know, harmless or that you don't think anything of. And do you want to get people fucking putting your your personal information? And, and, and you know, it's like the, you know, I, 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 musicians have, like, rabbit fan bases. Like, Beyonce has the beehive. Like, when, you know, when there were yeah. rumors of other, you know, of Jay-Z cheating on her with, uh, it was allegedly, I think, Rachel Ray or Rachel Roy or one of Rachel yeah, Ray. Yeah, yeah. They were gone. Dame's all girl or whatever. Dame's, yeah, and yeah. then I think they went to Rachel Ray's page and yeah, fucking, they started. They, <laughs> but it was the wrong Rachel, and yeah, they just put the bees and shit. You know what I mean? Oh shit! Or even a joke that I joke about, like with Theresa May, like you know what I mean? Like oh they, yeah, like yeah, with yeah. Trump tweeted to the wrong Theresa May, or and and she got death threats. Like it's like, but people have rabid fan bases. You know, it's it's tough, man. It's scary. I have a joke where I say I talk about DMX's lack of uh, vocabulary. And imagine if every DMX fan just went to me. It's just DMX fans are different types of fans. That's what like, I'm saying. Just start barking at me every time. I'm like, oh! <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just wild. Like, calm down, guys. These are jokes. It's a joke, but yeah. But you know, once again, I hope everything is all right. And you know, and 
And I think, you know, people will rally behind her and she will be fine, bro. So, all right. But, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, Sup Podcast, uh, episode number 72. Uh, you can follow me at notthatchini.com, um, at notthatchini on uh, social media platforms. Uh, L, what do you got? Uh, you can follow me, LZD325. You already know what it is. Your boy, LZD, Tribby Star, Web Star, World Star, Everyday Star. You already know what it is. Getting money, <laughs> whole fucking bitches, s- selling <laughs> drugs, doing cocaine left and right. You know what it is. We shooting at the fofo, popo, all day, slow, slow. Your bitch know that my fofo got more dolls than a Honda Accord, <laughs> bitch. Uh, I, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I don't even know what I said there, but... Uh, <laughs> that was poetry. That was poetry in motion. You did. <laughs> and I just, like I said, go on YouTube and watch, listen to us, watch us. Yeah, uh, tell somebody about this podcast. Uh, tell fucking, a friend and tell a friend. Yeah, go to our Patreon. Oh, shit, we got to plug that more. Because um, I got some fucking fire shit that's going to be on there uh, by next... I don't know when this. you guys are going to listen to this, but it's coming out soon. Yeah, it's going to come out soon. It's going to um, be fire, boy. Yeah, at Sub Podcast NYC, you fucking cold-ass ducks. Uh, anything else, Al? Nah, we good, man. This is a great, a great two party. You're gonna love it. Uh, you're gonna love it, and you're gonna keep listening. And we out this biatch. All right, peace, peace. Hey guys, go to iTunes, give us a review, five stars. Go check out our Patreon for Sub Podcast, and also go to remember to be happy dot com with the number two to check out our merch. Uh, and that's it, you motherfuckers. The duck is cold. Yeah, 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 yeah.